Hello, everyone, and welcome to Press This, the WordPress community podcast on WMR. This is your host, David Vogelpohl. I support the WordPress community through my role at WP Engine, and I love to bring the best of the community to you here every week on Press This. As a reminder, you can follow me on Twitter at WPDavidV. You can subscribe to Press This on Red Circle, iTunes, Spotify, or as always, download the latest episodes at WMR.FM. In this episode, we're going to be talking about a journey optimizing enterprise WordPress for blazing speed and more. And I got to see a sneak peek of this. It's really cool stuff. And joining us for this conversation, I'd like to welcome to Press This, Atul Jindal. Atul, welcome. Thank you, David. So glad to have you here. And for those listening, what we're going to cover today is uh, a tool's journey, optimizing an enterprise WordPress site for blazing fast speed, delightful search, and an optimized approach with varnish. So we're going to get a little nerdy today. So I hope you have your nerd hat on. Maybe it's nerd glasses. I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to <laughs> think about that. Um, cool. Well, kick us off a tool. I'm going to ask you the same question I ask everyone. Could you briefly tell me your WordPress origin story? When was the first time you used Word- WordPress? Thank you, David. So I'll start with my PHP development. Uh, back in 2007, I started working on PHP as a uh, developer. And then uh, after working for a few years, I started using uh, WordPress back in 2012 for local businesses around the city. And I like the WordPress backend system and I thought it's very you know, user-friendly to just create the smaller themes with one or two page sites for the local businesses. And then I worked on a couple of other uh, CMSs like Drupal, Zoomla, but the WordPress was one of my favorite choice being easy to work on. Uh, and then I started consulting with local firms uh, within the area as well. That's to, fantastic. To so 2012, this would have been two years after custom post types with uh, custom meta fields. Did that have any influence on your decision to try WordPress back in 2012 or you just were hearing about it or I'm just curious. Uh, I, uh, I had uh, looked up a couple of CMSs and I was using uh, from 2009 to 2010 Zoomla, but uh, Zoomla had a lot of complexities for small businesses to use because the URL structures were not that good. They wanted you know, their websites to be SEO friendly and WordPress had these things built in and was easy to use. So I preferred WordPress over other CMSs uh, after that. And, and then, since then I'm using WordPress and I like it. Excellent. I'm getting like a rush of memories here. I had some of the same experiences back then. Um, our prior guest, Mikhaik, he uh, he also was a PHP developer and had, had transitioned. He was replacing his homegrown CMS. That's what that was his backstory. It's kind of interesting, but a similar kind of journey to yours. Um, so you, I understand you do some work with Loud Growth, uh, and I was just curious, like, uh, if you could tell me a little bit about them and, and what you do for them or otherwise. Yeah, Loud Growth uh, is a consulting agency for uh, enterprise businesses. And I work with uh, them and a few other uh, companies like ConvertRank as a freelance consultant. And I help them in uh, high level enterprise uh, builds as well as consult them on high traffic websites. So how to optimize them and doing different strategy things as well as guiding their developers for uh, uh, managing and building the enterprise level websites from the technical standpoint. So uh, I went on a couple of projects with big brands, Fortune brands with Loud Growth as well as ConvertRank as a freelance consultant. That's awesome. Well, we've had quite a few guests on talking about building in the enterprise and I was reading through some of your approaches and I'm really excited to kind of ask you more about them as we get through the interview here. Um, but I know, you know, we have a, a lot of folks that listen that have, you know, very large WordPress sites and are, or maybe even wor- working in enterprise or even other agencies working in enterprise. So I think it's really interesting to think about the growth there and, and what's driving it, but also the implementation side, which, uh, you know, I know you have a really good uh, point of view on. Thank you. Um, so I understand, um, you know, for the project we're going to talk about today that you can't share the name of the company for the site you optimize and totally get that. 
Um, but really appreciate the insights that you can share. Um, but could you roughly explain what the purpose of the site was? Was it was like a brochure site? Was it uh, doing some kind of functionality, like just from the high level? Yeah, so uh, the website uh, had uh, B vendors. Basically, it was a website for a chip manufacturing company, uh, one of the top companies in the world. And they had almost uh, vendors in every part of the world. And they had three different portals uh, uh, originally. One was in Drupal and one was in Microsoft, some SharePoint or some other build. I don't remember exactly how they had that in Microsoft since I was open source developer. And, uh, and one was, uh, one portal was their own custom, but they wanted to uh, bring everything all together in one place. And they were using WordPress for, uh, for their uh, news and uh, marketing purposes for uh, announcements. And their head of product wanted to use WordPress as a backend solution in which they have everything all together and wanted to manage the vendors through the CMS. So this was a uh, main goal of their uh, project and they wanted to uh, wanted to have WordPress or Drupal in the solution, uh, but the team they had for you know, writing and content management really liked the WordPress uh, editor. So they wanted to use WordPress. This is how they chose the WordPress among other, other folks in the market. Wow, those are some incredible insights. So they're building a site basically to facilitate relationships with their manufacturing vendors and they're all over the world they're big company they yeah. have a drupal in their stack they have sharepoint in their stack they have some custom uh, platform in their stack and they have wordpress in their stack a little bit and then you say the head of product says they want to use wordpress for that and that one of the driving decisions was the ease of use of entering the content I mean, exactly. I think you just wrote like everyone's like proposal for WordPress to the enterprise for them. Um, I, that was awesome, the tool. Um, yeah. So let me ask you this, right? Like I'm just imagining them over there, like sitting there looking at all these systems and being like, which one are we going to go with for this big, important thing? And like, obviously, you know, they're not thinking like an SMB would think, right? Like, oh, we have templates. We can make a site fast, right? They're not mm -hmm. thinking like that. Um, so what do you think like their cons uh, considerations are for the enterprise when making this kind of decision? Like it's, it, it, surely it's more than just the editor, but like, what, what, are, how do you think of the, the con uh, considerations are different than say how an SMB might look at things? Yeah, exactly. So they had, uh, being an enterprise, uh, they had, they had a very big consideration about the security in the data because they had all the vendors which were like 400,000 vendors records uh, that was stored originally in Drupal as well as in SharePoint because they had two different working groups. One, uh, one working group was using uh, Drupal and one was using SharePoint. And they wanted to consolidate all those uh, 400,000 records in one place. And for that, they had uh, they wanted to have easy migration of the records into the system. And then they had also uh, one consideration of data security being topmost. So, so we came up uh, you know, with a solution of migrating the data and building the uh, custom uh, backend system using, uh, using custom post type plugin for the WordPress so that we can migrate that. So I write, I wrote some of the uh, 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 REST APIs using uh, using PHP core and then uh, use those REST APIs uh, to be called by WordPress to push the data directly into the custom post types. And then we built a top uh, on the top of that, built another layer of uh, application uh, that uh, that so helps it sounds to, like yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it sounds like the theme that's kind of emerging here in the consideration is is flexibility and speed, right? It sounds yes. like you're like, okay, we need to get all these records. They're all complicated. We need a nice place to put them. Um, I am kind of curious on the security side. You kind of mentioned that a minute ago. Uh, and I'd like to kind of unpack that along with some of the other optimizations you did around performance. But we're going to take our first break and we'll be right back. 
Time to plug into a commercial break. Stay tuned for more Press This in just a moment. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Press This, the WordPress community podcast on WMR. This is your host, David Vogelpohl. I'm in the middle of interviewing Atul Jindal about a project he did to optimize enterprise WordPress for blazing speed and more. Atul, right before the break, you were telling us a little bit about why the particular client in this project chose uh, WordPress. And you were kind of, from my perspective, telling this story of flexibility, speed, uh, and ease of use. Um, but I was kind of curious a little bit, uh, you know, we, we kind of promised and teased on some implementation specifics here, and I'd, I'd really like to get to the meat of that. Um, and you had mentioned to me prior to this interview um, that you'd done quite a bit to optimize per performance. So I was wondering if you could kind of walk us through some of the methods you use to optimize this particular build uh, for speed, because so far you're saying I have a huge database and uh, people from all around the world are going to see it. I'm thinking this is a slow site. So how'd you make it fast? Yeah, so so we had uh, on the stack, we had uh, Memcache and we had Varnish uh, to optimize the uh, content from the database. That was one consideration. We wanted to have everything loaded in the memory when uh, when the record is being uh, uh, pulled from the database, we wanted to have a snapshot of that page. For that, we used memcache and the varnish. So, so that made the content delivery faster rather than just using the CDNs. And then we had another consideration for the security. Uh, we, we tried to hide the WordPress admin from the public domain, which was the most important thing we we wanted to implement. So for that, we had a load balancers and we we just had the WordPress front end on different uh, set of servers. And then we had the back end staying somewhere else so that people can't access the WordPress. And Did you consider a, a headless build for this? I mean, you're, it's, you know what I mean? Like some of the benefits you're describing and it's kind of neat how you're doing that with core WordPress, but I'm just, Wondering if you had considered like decoupled JavaScript to solve that problem. Yeah, we had uh, we had some portions of uh, decoupled JavaScript as well, but it was like a few years ago, so we haven't implemented totally headless. Gotcha. So you're kind of getting some of the headless benefit though by using your load balancers to separate the front end from the back end, basically. Yes, exactly. Did that help with performance? Yeah, it helped. Uh, you know, since we had. Uh, we had a shared database that was stored, uh, you know, on a different server. We have we had a complex architecture on that, uh, so we are using the shared uh, da- uh, database. But we had all the front end part staying on a couple of other servers. That helped a lot in the performance, like uh, because we were taking the snapshot of the pages, so that whenever we had uh, some visitor or traffic spiking into the servers we had the varnish to hold that traffic and show the snapshots of the pages but the search was a big problem uh you know once we had this architecture in place then we tried to optimize the search because search results were taking too long to to bring up into the system and was not good experience for the users at that you're time. using the default WordPress search at that point in time before you yeah yeah what we, did you move to we we tried to use solar search for uh, for optimizing the optimizing the search experience for the users then we we integrated Apache solar because uh, the enterprise didn't want it to go with uh, a premium solution so they wanted to have everything in-house they don't want to uh, uh, go for the enterprise services so we used open source Apache Solar for that. Ah interesting yeah WP Engine our e-commerce offering includes Elastic Press which is uh, similar to Elastic Search but WordPress optimized. Yeah. Um, one of the benefits of that I'm just curious if you took advantage of that in this build with these other tools which I'm not familiar with <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh Regarding queries when loading web pages, um, I'm just curious. Like the the Elastic Press solution, not only improves the search results, but it will also improve uh, you know page load speed on, on pages with lots of queries. 
I'm just curious if you took advantage of that in your performance optimization in this build. Yeah, that's a very good question. So we uh, we essentially use the uh, solar search for optimizing search queries, but for the pages with lots of queries, we used memcache because we wanted to have uh, you know the custom records from the custom fields since WordPress stores all the records uh, in a very uh, very different format storing the uh, key value pairs in database so we wanted to have those using the memcache so that you know database doesn't have to run the queries yeah offloading this offloading those search queries all day long right yeah uh, yeah yeah big 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 thing yeah we run uh, our elastic press instance is actually an offloaded cluster so all the all the page load queries and search queries all go off off the wordpress server so exactly um, a little boost of speed there it was funny i i, I when i first is i didn't I, well i mean they have it documented but i discovered it by accident i turned it on on a site and the site got faster and i was like what happened oh, wow. <laughs> like, i didn't do anything like this page got faster all of a sudden it's like yeah wow. Uh, yeah, for me, it was like, you know, I was I was trying to optimize for WordPress speed and I started looking into the database structure, how the content is being stored and organized in the tables within the database, because if we were having different tables, very complex things and wanted to understand the WordPress data storage thing to get an idea, then I came across memcache would be the best solution to optimize the wordpress i got you let me ask you a question real quick on the search implementation you kind of said you arrived there because core wordpress search was underperforming and especially in big databases and stuff like that obviously is a problem but um did you uh did the customer did they try to like optimize the experience with like custom search results or any sort of like uh you know, I'm not trying, I'm trying to understand the, I guess I don't fully understand the purpose of the site, but did they, did they try to, was it just about making it faster or did they want to change the experience itself? Uh, they wanted to change the experience as well with, uh, with the multiple filters within the search as, as well as doing some themes and, uh, you know, having some nice layouts and improving the customer journey of the, of the visitors. So they wanted to over ramp over uh over ramp the overall ramp the experience of the wordpress That's not awesome. just the not just the search performance they wanted to build the experience as well yeah, that's awesome to hear. I know that for a lot of sites, it's like the last thing on your list to go optimize. It is such an important part. Um, I read a study last year. It was something like uh, 43% of shoppers use the search uh, bar in an e-com store and are twice as likely to buy. And like you're like, whoa, maybe that's actually <laughs> kind of nice, right? Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because search transcends so much of building a site, just even beyond things as simple as a product search. Uh, it sounds like you're able to take advantages of a lot of that here. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, the content writers wanted the WordPress because they were publishing stories on a regular basis and their uh, backend editor was favorite. So we wanted them to use it rather so than going for Drupal. So you're talking about the content editors there. It kind of reminded me earlier in this interview how you were saying one of the decisions that led here was the ease of use of the editor. And um, I mean, it, it feels like the motivation maybe behind that, I don't know if you, you have an observation here, is that you know, as people think about what systems they want to create and maintain, they're also thinking about like how often those users are going to be bugging them. And like WordPress provides such an easy path for the content creators. I'm just wondering if, if you see that expressed in, in your side of these projects. Yeah, I do see a lot of value in uh, ease of content creation and having the WordPress so easy to use for the uh, for the just the writers or the people who don't have technical background as compared to other CMS uh, because in Drupal they have the editor but still it looks quite complex these, to these, use these some of these editors I think are really good it's just that like I would remember I was in a meeting with a big uh, telecommunications company and they were trying mm -hmm. to choose a CMS and they had two proprietary and one WordPress and I stood up in front of the room and I said, who knows how to use the first proprietary? And a few people raised their hand, second proprietary, a few more people. 
I said WordPress, like the entire room raised their hand, even the people that knew the other CMS. And I was like, Ooh. yep, that's why you might want to consider WordPress. Yeah, exactly. WordPress has a great SEO benefits being uh, built for SEO, I think. Oh, yeah. A lot of the, of course, the ecosystem of plugins, developers, people to hire, uh, documentation, so many things. Okay. Now, I want to okay. kind of bridge this a little bit, though, and I wanted to kind of pick your brain on what your favorite parts of this project were, but we're going to take our last break and we'll be right back. Time to plug into a commercial break. Stay tuned for more Press This in just a moment. Everyone, welcome back to Press This, the WordPress community podcast on, on uh, Webmaster Radio. This is your host, David Vogelpohl. I'm in the middle of interviewing a tool about optimizing WordPress for speed, a tool right before the break. We were talking a, a little bit about the role of the user experience in guiding the decisions of enterprises when choosing a CMS. I always love talking about that. Um, but I kind of want to now leave it open to you. Like yeah, this was a pretty big project for you. You had a lot of complex parts. What was your uh, favorite part of the project and why? Yeah, so my favorite part of project was uh, actually, uh, that's a funny story. Uh, in the beginning, I was very, uh, very excited to use WordPress. But when, when it came to the optimizing it, because we started building the things and everything, theme was built up and then installed, site went drastically slow because the data size was so huge. It was like in gigabytes, right? So, so then, uh, then I told them like, this is getting slow. We should get something enterprise for uh, either for caching or something. They said, no, we, uh, we will uh, go with the uh, open source solutions. And then I scratched my head to think about like, how should I architect this for, uh, for performance? Then, then we had started looking into a couple of options and we came up with the Warnish thing and Memcache and Solar. So I would say uh, uh, for, uh, for enterprise websites, uh, the best way is to think about like performance first. That would be uh, my suggestion on this. So it sounds like your favorite part of it, if I could like paraphrase it, is the customer comes in with the requirement to use yes. open source. And you're thinking like, oh, I could just you know, solve it with this proprietary tool or something. And, uh, and then they add the constraint. Constraints are always the fun part of projects, right? And yeah. then now you've got to go like figure it out and architect the open source way. Did you, do you think like you're more likely to, to like choose open source next time? Or do you still think like sometimes it is a proprietary easy way out? So, uh, or, or are they even that easy? Did you, did you find the open source solutions superior for some reason? Uh, no, I think open source are best and I would go with open source as well if I need to go. The only thing I would say is uh, the things that I, uh, that I uh, lost in this project in the beginning was we were not considering the performance based on the data size. We were, uh, we were more focused on helping the content marketing team and the uh, user experience guys to build the beautiful design. So choosing over enterprise or choosing over uh, open source uh, entirely depends on the budgets. Sometimes companies have, do have the budgets in their pockets to afford a big enterprise solution. Sometimes they just want to uh, have developers scratch their heads and find a solution within the constraints. I like it. It sounds like though, like if you had a lesson to learn from this project, it sounds like like check the performance side earlier in the project is that a safe assumption yeah think about that uh, performance rather than just uh trying to please the uh ux guys yeah because it's funny because like when i think of ux i think of it i often describe it as the balance of suffering and joy uh, <laughs> the joy of bringing a new visual experience to someone and the suffering of page load time you add when you do that um, yeah 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 very true yeah, you have to keep that balance um, in check to build a performant and good website. Well, this sounds like a really exciting project. Are you, you, you happy you did it? You, you glad it's out the door? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I had a very, uh, very, uh, very strong learnings from this enterprise level build because we had, uh, we had considered 
uh, how to uh, optimize this infrastructure as well for future developments. So there was a lot of things that I learned in this project. Excellent. Well, you can. That's always a wonderful thing. So glad to hear it. Well, a tool I really enjoyed hearing your story today and appreciate you sharing it. Thank you so much for joining us here on the show. Yeah, absolutely, David. Awesome. Nice if you'd like, you. thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to check out some of what a tool has been up to, you can visit loudgrowth.com. Thanks everyone for listening to Press This, the WordPress community podcast on WMR. Again, this is your host, David Vogelpohl. I support the WordPress community through my role at WP Engine, and I love to bring the best of the community to you here every week on Press This. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of WebmasterRadio.fm's management or sponsors. Any rebroadcast or redistribution without authorized consent of WebmasterRadio.fm is prohibited.